Well, first of all, Blackstone is up 47 percent year to date. And the market has understood that the private equity business, which is all about selling the companies that are in your portfolios, has been weak so far this year. And probably this was the lowest quarter for realization. And we're going to start to see an upturn because interest rates are peaking. And that's good for private equity. The fact that it's only down I don't know, quarter of a point right now, I think is a positive because investors understand and they're looking past this quarter that's behind us to the future where realizations will pick up a trillion dollars in assets under their umbrella is incredible. They are the big gorilla in the room. And we really feel that with real estate starting to look positive and with them positioned in private equity and, and a number of funds that are doing extremely well and growing with management fees and now selling some of those assets, this is a stock given that the multiple is below the market, will continue to outperform. You know, um, I think one of the most interesting charts in the entire market today is DR Horton, uh, which I'm looking at right now. Look at the intraday there. You had a spike of like 4%, and then before you looked at it again, the stock is down more than 3%. I just want the take, Josh, you have a take here. I know you don't own it, but you do own Invitation. Um, there's some other housing related plays and many of these stocks have been trading at all time highs and perhaps that is the only reason why we're seeing a chart look the way it does just the stocks have been ripping. Yeah I can't I can't find like a, an actual reason this is like this is when people use the term blow off top this is exactly what they're referring to I don't like when stocks go parabolic and then reverse and close out the day negative that's really dangerous. Uh, price action. What we're doing here is analyzing the behavior of the buyers and sellers, not the fundamentals. And what that tells you is that maybe not a full on psychological shift, um, but maybe the shareholder base is now too heavily concentrated amongst momentum players and maybe not as heavily concentrated amongst fundamental uh, fundamentally driven shareholders as maybe it was six months ago. So when you get a lot of momentum money in a name, you could have a, a blow off top like this, a reversal like this. I think you got to be careful until it cools off. Yeah. Horton, I would have I mean, like knee jerk. I would have like knee jerk be buying into this. Yeah. I mean, here, it's just up 38 it's down. percent. Uh, sorry. It's up 38 percent year to date. Uh, XHB is up up 36. Uh, airlines are a place to look as well uh, because of United Airlines, Jimmy. You own Alaska and Delta, as we talked yesterday. Uh, but this sector is on fire. It's on fire. I mean, American also had good reports. Um, you know, a little bit of shaky price action across the sector today, but that's really just because, and this is what Josh was talking about uh, a second ago, just how, how much these uh, stocks have soared, pun intended, uh, over the past few months. Honestly, I think it's going to continue, but let me say two incongruous things. I just said it's going to continue, but these are not long-term holdings. These are not stocks that you put in your closet and forget about and open up the closet 20 what, years later. Airlines? Yeah. These but, are, I mean, but, but how, do you, how can you say that? You've owned Alaska Airlines for as long as I can remember talking to you on this program. It's it's not as long as you think. It, it what came out, it started it right at the pandemic, and it's taken longer. This is your point, though. It's taken longer to have its value recognized than I would have liked. That's happening now. I think there is more to go in terms of that value recognition, that intrinsic value recognition for the airlines. But this is not a stock that you and I should be talking about a year from now. It just isn't. So you won't, you don't think you'll be in the airlines a year from now? Uh, I really don't. I mean, there's other, you know, there's stocks you and I talk about, we all talk about, like a Cisco Systems, a Home Depot, that are in the portfolio for years. They're steady eddies. They just do their job. They're long-term holding. Airlines are not that stock. You are correct. I've had to hold this longer, simply, Alaska Airlines, simply because the market hasn't believed what I thought I saw a few years ago. Well, now it's starting to recognize it. I'm going to let it run a little further. You want to give me something on, uh, I know you don't own LVS, you own Wynn. LVS story seems to be a, a Macau that's a bit slower than people expected. You have to believe, I mean, isn't Wynn part of that story too? Wynn is part of that story. Actually, the numbers were better than expected. I mean, the share price reaction today is a little bit, a little bit of a head scratcher, but honestly, these names, Scott, Las Vegas Sands, Wynn, that have a lot of Macau exposure, they rallied hard at the end of, the, of last year into this year. They have flatlined since. The reason they flatlined is exactly what you're talking about, the, the fizzling China recovery. That leads leaves room to the upside, frankly, for China to stimulate and get that going. But the Macau numbers actually weren't that bad at Las Vegas Sands. 
With regards to wind, you've got Las Vegas. I know Las Vegas Sands doesn't have Las Vegas operations. Wind does, and Boston. There's a lot of things going right for that sector and wind in particular. All right. Thank you for that.